Let's dive right into it. So I released a new version of my app, and I'm getting this nasty error. And I really want to go to the after party, so I hope we can solve it here together. You can see I'm reading API URL from, from an undefined variable that tells me something, but because this appears over 100 times in my application, I have no idea where to start. So I'm looking at the stack trace below, and I see everything points to the main.js bundle. So that's not really helpful either. The first thing that I can grasp on is the on press button. So I know it's happening when the user interacts with the app. But the rest of the stack trace is minified and doesn't really give me any details. Please raise your hand if you were experiencing similar issue where you just have no idea what to do. Everything points to the bundle. Awesome. I see many, many hands. So I'm at the right place. When I'm thinking about this again, of course, I forgot to upload source maps. So let me try to fix that. Mm. All right. This looks much better. Still the same error, API URL. But now I can see the error screen in my application. But wait a moment. The line 61 definitely doesn't read anything from API URL. There is something wrong here. Possibly, I've uploaded the wrong source maps, and Sentry couldn't do anything better than show me this line. Uh, let me check the folder with my source maps. And yeah, you can see I've been doing many releases, just piling the source maps here together with the JavaScript bundles. But I guess I got them mixed them up. And now I don't know what to do with that. Hmm. I could just go try and error one after the other until some of the symbolications looks decent. And I could start debugging from that. But they will take forever. And they told me that the talk should be about 20 minutes. So a bit about myself. Uh, my name is Christoph. I work at Sentry at the Viennese office. And I maintain the React Native SDK. The name of my talk is Oops, there was one too much. Name of my talk is Leveling Your Debugging Experience with Debug IDs. That's the solution to my source map problem. But before that, let's take a step back and talk a bit about what are source maps. Uh, from the high level view, we can think about it as a Lego set that one of you just won in the boot uh, back at the entrance. And the Lego set is our application that we'll need to ship to our users. We'll pack it into small box, small as possible, and we'll create a manual for it so we can rebuild it back to the original. But imagine you have multiple revisions. In case of your applications, you have development, staging, production environments. All of a sudden, you have multiple versions of your Lego bricks, and you have multiple versions of your manual. All say, my beautiful car, but they are all ever so slightly different. And if you choose the wrong one, you won't be able to rebuild it correctly. It would be a good idea to put a serial number or something more descriptive onto the car and also onto the manual. And then you wouldn't have to try and error which manual is the correct one. Let's move a bit forward. Let's get a bit more technical. What the source maps are. For the purpose of this talk, source maps are just JSON file with some specified properties like names, sources, mappings. We don't really have to dive into how these works. That's a separate talk on its own. Um, so for us, this is how we recognize source map. Sometimes there is also source content. That's, for example, the default case when you generate source maps for React Native. But Let's take a step back. How did we get to the source map in the first place? I have super simple example, so it's easy to follow for everyone, including me. It says, hello, app.js. And we want to create a bundle out of this, make it small as possible. I'll enable minification. It will look something like this. We don't need to know the whole hello, the O is enough. We we'll still see that it says, hello, app.js. And because I enabled source maps, 
I also get this. I'll get the source mapping URL that's pointing to the source map file, to the JSON file that I've shown on the previous slide. But this can get very complicated, same as the manuals before. I'll have multiple files, as I've shown in my directory before, and I might lose this relationship between my code.main.js and the source map with the postfix.map. I'll have multiple versions. I'll ship my code to App Store, release the application. I keep the source map on my computer. And I'll run into this problem where I don't know which one is the correct one. But we can do better than this. We can replace it with unique identifier that is not that easy to mix up. And even though the bundle and the source map will get split up and won't be together in the same folder structure, I'll be able to find and tell for sure which source map is the correct one. All right. Um, so let's take a look how this debug ID translates back to the source map. It's super simple. There is just this key debug ID, the same ID as we've seen before in the file. And now we have this strong, unbreakable relationship between the two files. But how did we get here that we ran some build command, got the debug ID? I really like to play lately with bun, so let's try to use that first. So I'll use the bun build command, set up some options, point it to my source code, define the output directory, enable the external source maps, because that was the whole talk is about. And as well as you've seen in the example, I minified the code. So I'll add that option too. And that actually is everything I need to do because bundle, uh, sorry, because bun already generates the debug IDs and includes them in the bundle file and the source map. But likely not every one of you is using bun. So what if we use something else, webpack, esbuild? Let's take a look at that. The command looks almost the same. I replace e uh, bun with esbuild, build with bundle. The rest is the same, but no debug ID in my generated files and source maps. So I'll have to do it myself. Uh, I might use the plugin ecosystem that the tooling offers, or I can use the Sentry CLI. So in the first case, this is a sample small code snippet that shows us how the adding of the debug IDs could work. So first, we get the bundle. That's the content of our file. And based on that, we generate the debug ID. We create a unique hash of the file and then append it to the end. And in case we couldn't use the plugins, we don't want to create one. We might just use this source map inject pointed to our directory. It will go through the files created and their source maps. And before this, source, uh, before this structure of the files breaks down, before we deploy our application, it will inject and create this strong relationship with debug ID. But that's not enough for debug IDs to do the magic that uh, I'll show you at the end. We'll need them to be available in the runtime as well. And because the current JavaScript engines do not read the debug IDs out of the file, we'll need to use something that you all heard many times about. We'll need to use a polyfill. So how could that look like? We can define a global variable, a map of the debug IDs that are being loaded to the runtime as the JavaScript bundles are being executed. And I helped myself here a bit, define this pseudo function, get current file path, uh, instead of describing the logic, how we create an error, read the stack trace, and actually get the file uh, associated with the debug ID. But this was all generic, applicable to web and mobile, but what are the React Native specific parts. Actually, let me do a small sidetrack. What do you get with Sentry and React Native? If you use 
the Sentry product in your React Native application, you get error monitoring, you get the stack trace that I've seen, that I've shown in the beginning, and you get context information about what was going on in the app, and you get all the information to solve your errors as quickly as possible. That's where the debug IDs fit in. You as well get release monitoring to see how your app gets adopted if people are migrating to the newer versions that you released. And you also see what versions are getting errors where, where it hurts the users the most. And when you have that figured out, you might want to also focus on performance. You want to see if the application is starting fast enough, if you are not losing potential customers there, if during the navigation in the app are any slow frames, if the app feels sluggish, that's what you can do with our performance monitoring. But back to the debug IDs and how do we get them in React Native applications. The same way as Expo is the easiest way to build new React Native applications, it's also the easiest way to get debug IDs. You can just build a native app or run the Expo update or Expo export with the source maps enabled. And that's all you need to do. The debug IDs will be generated in the bundle file and the source map. But there is one part of it that you still need to add yourself. And that is the runtime polyfill. So tools like Sentry, error monitoring tools, can link the error that's been captured in your application to that debug ID and send that for processing to the server. We work together with Expo on this plugin option that gives you the pre-modules and the debug IDs. Why the pre-modules? Because we want to load the debug IDs as soon as possible, so any error that might happen in the application afterwards can benefit from having it. So this plugin creates the debug ID module. You can imagine it just as a simple JavaScript object that specifies the code that will be included in the bundle. And we place it to the first place in the pre-modules array that's being returned from this plugin. And if you use the Sentry React Native SDK, you just don't have to think about it. You can just replace the get expo config with get Sentry expo config, and this will be set up for you automatically. But I have to acknowledge, not every application yet migrated to Expo. So how do we do the same thing in bare React Native app? This might look familiar to you as the Metro config.js file. If you are lucky as me, it's completely empty because the default config is enough for you. Uh, but for the debug IDs, we'll have to add some things here. We'll focus to the last part in the Metro process. So that's the serializer. If uh, you're not familiar with the Metro steps, it resolves the files that will need to be included in the bundle. It runs transformations on them. And the last step in the pipeline is the serialization. It, that's right before this file will be, uh, the string of the bundle will be created and written to the file. So let's take a look on the changes. We'll use the property called custom serializer. And we will wrap the default behavior of the Metro serializer with the debug ID polyfill, as well as the comment at the end of the file and adding the key to the source map. So let's go through this. Uh, yeah, OK. First, as I mentioned, we generate the debug ID based on the content that will end up in the bundle. Then we create the module and add it to the first place, similar as we did in the Expo config. Then we run the default Metro serializer. Uh, we create the bundle file, uh, sorry, the bundle variable. We create the source map. And the last thing is the bundle to string, which actually is the string with the content that will end up in the bundle. And the last bit, we'll add the debug ID to the last line of the file. As well, we add the debug ID key with the value to the source map. And then the function just returns 
as there would be no additional code like code and the map. Uh, for completeness, these are the imports of the default metro functions. But similar to the previous time, you don't have to worry about it. You can just include the width sentry configuration uh, from the sentry React Native metro, and it will do the wrapping for you. So now I have everything set up. I should be able to generate new bundle and new source map with the debug ID included. So now I can take all the source map generated, throw them at Sentry, and it cannot make a mistake. If I generated the correct source map, there will be the correct debug ID. I'll get the debug ID from the runtime, and we'll see where I've made mistake. And sure, we do. So at the top, we see it is the same error, API URL reading off of undefined value. And now on the line 63, we can see that that looks promising. Like I see the same API URL reading it off of config. Config goes somewhere from somewhere where it's not defined. So now I'll be able to take my laptop, go to the backstage, fix it up, and join you on time to the party. If you have any questions,